a warm day, you can stand right above the canal and get a little bit of a cooling effect off of it. A little bit of free air condition. Travel day today. As we get a glimpse of the surrounding hillsides. A 35-minute bus ride from where we started in Budva to get to KOTOR. KOTOR, many people that I've read online say it is the best city to visit in the entire country of Montenegro. I've been here for seven minutes, so I don't have a judgment on that yet. I'm digging the uh, fortress walls that climb up into the hillside here. Well, the bus station is just a moment or two behind us. We're gonna walk down towards the city. I have all the gear with me today. So I think my plan will be to get to my hotel that I have reserved, drop the gear, and then go explore around the city of Kotor. Coming back with more. Well, we've had the coffee and we have dropped off the backpack at the hotel for tonight. A good walk from the bus station up to the hotel, over a mile, about a kilometer and a half. Flat at the beginning, then straight uphill. Now we're going downhill. And that will get us our first proper look at the Bay of Kotor. A large body of water. It actually is kind of halved into two pieces of water, two bodies of water. This one closest to the actual city of Kotor. A lot of people out boating today, sun tanning, or just cafe for a coffee, cocktail, or a Coke. But I think when we get down here, we'll be able to take this path along the water all the way back into the city. I won't film that entire walk, but go ahead and get a little peek at the uh, at the bay. It's dramatic with the mountains going right into the water on both sides. It's kind of like a little village feel down here. A little Bayside Cafe. A couple of boats here bouncing in the wake. Here's your aforementioned sun tanner. And then back up the hill, there's actually a cable car, a funicular ski lift type thing that you can take to the top of the mountain pass that on the bus ride up it's about 15 euros so about 16 17 dollars but it'll take you all the way to the top of those mountains there it looks like some clouds moving swiftly above what an absolutely beautiful day temperature is about 72 degrees about 21 Celsius. All right, to the city of Kotor. So off the bay and up a little hill, you have the Kotor Fortress. Maybe hard to make out. It is, um, if you see the little zigzag, read online, I guess you can climb that. Um, it's kind of hard to distinguish, but maybe there's some stairs in there. Uh, the Kotor Fortress is described uh, with a hike at the top with sweeping views over the valley. So I'm assuming you can get there somehow. And there's also looks like a little cathedral right there, but I don't see any people actually climbing or descending, so I'm not 100% certain. The best unobstructed views of the mountainside that I've been able to find, those are known as Mediterranean Limestone Mountains. 
thank you Wikipedia. A view back out towards the uh, valley. I don't know, maybe the uh, the cable car. Ski lift, maybe we'll take you to the fortress. Again, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I'll find out as I continue to uh, stroll through the city here. Definitely want to get down and visit the old town walls. That's a highlight. This is a little hill I just came up to get that view. The uh, city of KOTOR has about 13,000 year-round citizens. Since the early 2000s, the uh, city has kind of found its way onto the touristy map of the uh, Balkan countries. Uh, a lot of cruise ships call here. You can take many boat tours from here for about 20 euros. Take you on a two-hour tour around the Bay Area. Some of the highlights. All right, this puts us back down on the main thoroughfare. Let's continue on heading into the uh, city proper. What a fantastic day for exploring. Well, down off the hillside, we come back out here to the Bay Area. And actually looking it up, again, thank you, Wikipedia. KOTOR has been called the southernmost fjord in Europe. When you think fjords, of course, you're going to think of Norway. And we're a long way from Norway, especially south. Just the way the uh, mountains, I guess, kind of surround the water. People think of it kind of as a fjord. And while that probably makes sense, it's actually officially called a ria. What is a ria, you ask? Well, I had to look it up too. It is a submerged river canyon. How about that? A little vocabulary lesson here as well. This little park down here at the edge of the water, still working our way back into the proper city center. There's a duty-free shop over there, which is kind of interesting. I'm thinking that maybe from here, you can take an international boat ride somewhere. I did uh, mention before that this is a cruise ship port, so maybe it'd be something along the lines of like a uh, Mediterranean cruise. All right, on we go. go to it. All right, we've seen the water, we've seen the mountains. Now we're trying to find a crosswalk so we can get over here and look at the old town walls. There's the lower view of it. Also the church right on top of it. But right now I'm stuck here on this sidewalk with the plant barriers prohibiting any cross traffic. So I think I'm gonna to have to zip down and around and try to find a suitable zebra stripe to go across. I walked this earlier. This is where we headed up from the bus station. Oh, no, we're going down and under. A lot of visitors in town today. We'll take the stairs. Now, a lot of places when you go underneath, you'll have shopping options and cafes and things such as that, like in a lot of the larger cities around Europe. Here you can get a boat tour. I can confirm boat tours are 20 euros for an hour and a half and 40 euros. For three hours, I think it was, for 40 euros. Yes, sir. That's more information. Thank you. One guy tried to sell me one. I said, I do not have enough YouTube subscribers to afford that. That is not in the budget. All right, we are across. Let's see if we can't go this direction. 
Roll through the BMW motorcycles. And the Old Town Wall is just ahead. Down here you see what is the main gate, the C gate, as they call it. According to maps. And then this map right here. Give you an idea of the size of the Old Town of Couture. So as we walk through, I think we're going to be greeted by the old clock tower. I'll buzz through a few people's pictures there. If they're in mine, I'll be in theirs. Clock tower dates back to the 1600s, 17th century. It's about 400 years ago to you and I. So you got the historical zone with the requisite European cobblestones laid everywhere. And several people out enjoying a weekend on the sidewalk. Cafes. Not a bad scene. Cats of KOTOR, they are all over the old town. I think I've found the path up to the old town walls. I'm gonna have to climb a little bit. Let's go check it out. Where I saw you 
Well, the climb to the top of the hill to go to what I thought was going to be the old town walls was all for nothing. Because up there, that's pretty nice. It basically is an observation viewpoint to look back into the old town and over the city. A cool idea in itself, but a 15 euro charge to go into the observation deck. That is not in my budget. That or a 20 euro boat ride or an eight dollar Aperol or eight euro Aperol spritz, which we saw right at the beginning of the old town. Interesting thing about KOTOR, it is 25 miles as the bird flies from KOTOR to the capital of Podgorica. Maybe about 40, 40 kilometers. But it is a two hour ride. Maybe a little bit less if you're in a, a car, but about a two hour bus ride to cover those 25 miles or 40 kilometers. Just because all the roads have to go through and over the mountains here in Montenegro. But I tell you what, it's some of the most beautiful scenery, not just in Europe, but anywhere <laughs> I've had a chance to visit. I think this is a path I've not been on yet really like to find the old town walls they're here somewhere How about this when you can't find what you're looking for continue on the path go a little bit further make one more turn around the corner and we did that and that's how we found the old town walls so not what i thought before when i hiked up that hill with the uh cats all over the place that was one to the observation tower for 15 euros that I thought was a little expensive. And reading the reviews online afterwards, I think most people agreed. Cool views, but 15 euros is a little bit pricey. Was the gist of most of them that I read. Similar to uh, Budva, it's kind of neat to be above the places that you just walked moments ago. I'll give you that a little above view back over the water. Sundown will probably be a little bit earlier here in KOTOR with the mountains hiding the sun just a little bit earlier than maybe other places that don't have the mountains surrounding it. Does that make sense? I know what I'm trying to say. The mountains are going to hide the sun quicker than if there was no mountains. That's what I'm trying to say. No charge to come up here on the old town wall. Two euros and Budva, but a very, very good two euros to spend for what you got out of it. See that the sun goes behind the clouds and look how the hillside and the water changes colors. That's pretty neat. All right, continue on and quickly.
a well, much better clearer view than the uh, KOTOR Fortress than we've seen thus far. Right in the center of the hillside, you see it looks like a cathedral there. Now I do see some people on that, that rock staircase that will lead the climb up to the fortress itself, I assume. I have no idea where that trail begins. It's not been anywhere that I have, uh, have seen thus far on my little exploration of the old town here. Yeah, what looks like the defense wall right there. There's no path going up that direction. So I think the one way to get up there is right there on that stone staircase. Well, if I find out where it starts, I'll include it. No way in hell I'm going all the way up there today, though. A little chop out there in the uh, bay, the Kotor Bay. On the hunt for a uh, affordable beer. That's proven to be challenging. I think the biggest problem I'm having is I'm walking along the coast the entire way, which everything I guess is going to be a little more pricey seaside. I've seen as high as five and a half euros. Cheapest I found I think was three euro eighty. I drank local pints in Budva in the city center for three and a half. There's nothing else. Enjoy the deal. The fjords of Norway. Ha! Correction. Montenegro. Maybe if I get off the main drag, I will find a, uh, a proper pint as they say in old London. We have a proper pint. I don't know how far this uh, little boardwalk or whatever you want to call it continues. I'm definitely getting out of the... It's definitely not sand. Just pebbles that'll end up in my shoes. Yeah, we get another view when we make the turn here. Oh, amazing. Even if we didn't find a affordable beer, we found a pretty good, pretty good view to wrap up the afternoon of walking. It's only 5.45 p.m., no sun. Sundown really is at 6.15, so I called it. The sun does go down earlier. An old co-tour because you're behind the mountains. Wow, look at that. Let's do the old panorama here. Well, after about a 30-minute walk along the Bayfront. I came up the steps or the road and now I'm back on the main drag. I have found absolutely nothing out here that would cater towards like a local person. Uh, everything has just been touristy prices, I guess is the best way to say it. I thought coming back on the main road, maybe I would find a just like one of those well, that's pretty one of those little coffee shops that the uh, old guys sit out have coffee at 7 in the morning and then start sipping Heineken's for 2 euros at about 11 in the morning but alas that has not been the uh, that has not been the case
still a very uh, pretty walk though. As the sun dips behind the uh, mountains over there. Alright, uh, just a little bit more to go and we're back at the apartment. I don't know what we do for food. Maybe a Snickers. Without nuts. Milky Way. From Kotor, Kotor Montenegro.